So this is lecture 4.6, actually. Um, this is the muscle. This is the third one of the knee, sixth one of the module four. Um, looking at the knee musculature, and uh, lucky for us that the um, uh, most of the muscles uh, of the knee we've already covered in the hip. Um, so again, um, we look at the knee musculature, a majority of the uh, muscles are here at the thigh. Um, a lot of uh, bioarticulate muscles, muscles that cross the hip that also function at the knee. So we'll be reviewing those same muscles, but just now uh, in terms of their function at the knee versus their function at the hip. Um, so the muscles are grouped into anterior and posterior, so it makes it really easy, straightforward. Um, so you have your quadricep group for the anterior musculature. Uh, these are the uh, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, and rectus femoris. And then underneath rectus femoris, in between the lateralis and medialis is the vastus intermedius. And you can kind of see the uh, attachments here. Um, they all have similar function. Um, the only difference is that the rectus femoris is the only one of the quads that crosses the hip. So it has a moment for hip flexion. Uh, outside of that, all of them do uh, knee extension. So you kind of see the knee extension here. Um, the rectus femoris does cross the hip. It's at the AIIS and hits the top of the patella and the tibial tuberosity and has a moment for knee extension. Uh, vastus lateralis um, is on the lateral side here. It's going to pull the media or the it's going to pull the patella laterally, and then the vastus medialis is going to pull the patella medially but they converge and become the same tendon after that. So is your vastus medialis, and then your vastus intermedius right there in the middle. So look at the muscles all the same as the quadriceps. Um, you can see some of these medial and uh, laterally directed forces based on the uh, patella. And there is a little bit of this division of this vastus medialis called the oblique fibers because they're running more uh, obliquely like an angle and they're going to have a better moment for pulling this media. This They're going to counter the IT band on the patella. And again, the patella is uh, giving the body more mechanical advantage so that the muscles, you can kind of see here based on the, the surface area here, if the patella wasn't there, the quadricep muscles would have to generate so much more tension in order to get the exact same movement. But here, because of that mechanical pulley and, and moment arm or lever, it is uh, decreasing the amount of force that the quadriceps actually have to generate in order to uh, get the same exact am amount of movement, right? So the patella is a big part of that mechanical advantage. So in the posterior muscles, we're going to be looking at the, um, the hamstring groups, but before we do that, we're going to look at the popliteus. Now the popliteus muscle is the one that I was referring to with the screw home mechanism. This is, does a internal rotation of the tibia which is the exact opposite, or what's needed to unlock the knee to start knee flexion um, from an extended position. So that screw home mechanism where you get that little bit uh, at the last 20 degrees of knee extension, you're getting about 10 degrees of external tibia rotation. The popliteus is the muscle that counteracts that, um, so it, it does the internal rotation that unlocks the knee that allows that knee flexion to occur. Um, we have a, the gastrocnemius muscle, which crosses the knee and the ankle. This is usually referred to as an ankle muscle, but um, I showed you guys that image of the two hands uh, overcrossing with the hamstrings coming down and the gastroc coming up. Um, the gastroc is a pretty powerful knee flexor. Um, it has just as much moment for knee flexion as the hamstring. The hamstring uh, has a greater range of motion at which it can contract over, um, but the hamstring group the hamstring group and the gastrocnemius muscles, both medial and lateral head, they work together to um, to create knee flexion. So in the next uh, module, we'll talk more about the, or next unit, we'll talk about uh, the gastroc as an ankle plantar flexor. But for now, we're looking at it as a knee flexor. Um, here's your biceps, uh, long head, short head again. Uh, we, we talked about it as a, a knee, a, a hip extensor but it is a powerful knee flexor and it does do external tibia rotation. Remember the long head and short head, uh, they, they originate in different places. So the long head crosses the hip, the short head does not, so it does not have a influence over hip movements, but they both, um, they converge and become the same tendon and they have the same effect at the knee, knee flexion and external rotation. 
there's your short head, there's your long head covering up, and uh, you can see that it does not cross the knee, the hip, I mean. Uh, semi-tendinosis, semi-membranosis, again, review from the hip extensors. Um, also have a moment on the knee, but instead of doing external uh, rotation, they do knee internal rotation, so they're internal rotators, whereas the biceps are external rotators. There's a sartorius again uh, as a hip flexor and external rotator and abductor, but it's also a knee flexor and an external rotator of the, uh, of the knee. Uh, gracilis uh, is also a knee flexor. Remember the semitendinosis, the sartorius, and the gracilis all come down and attach at the pezanserine uh, region. So we've been looking at these uh, three muscles here with the pes anserine, but you can see them more clear with knee flexion. And you can see that if they tug on here, all three of these muscles, this would pull back this direction, and that would create external uh, tibia rotation. Right? So these are all external tibia rotators in this sense. Uh, and that's it for, for that. Uh, a little specific details, but I definitely would rely on the, uh, the anatomy tour that we posted video-wise. Um, this is looking at more just kind of general muscle function, um, kind of what's happening. Uh, really, the business end of the knee is looking at the ligament test structure, looking at the meniscus, looking at the ligaments, how those are coming into play. Um, there's, a, there's a saying in the rehab field that the knee is really a symptom of either hip dysfunction or ankle dysfunction. And it's kind of true, right? There's really not much going on at the knee um, except for problems with the meniscus, with the ligaments, and so forth. But in ter and maybe sometimes with the patellar tracking, but a lot of times those issues are coming from the hip or from the ankle or both. Um, but definitely the, um, the muscles are redundant from both the ankle and the thing. There's really only the popliteus and the, the, the short head of the bicep are the only exclusive knee muscles outside of that. Oh, and the vastus, the uh, quadricep group. But for the most part, most of the muscles are hip movements or hip movers or ankle movers. So make sure to review the pages that are listed there. Um, just complete the, those, the one, six, and seven from the review exercises. And then give an attempt at the lab exercises, one, three, uh, four, and then definitely eight. Uh, just pick those eight uh, number uh, just for the lower extremity movements and see what you can get for your agonist antagonist type component. Um, but if you want more detail of the muscle, you review the hip lecture or uh, do the and review the anatomy tour again. Um, and then make sure that you are really up to speed on your ligaments and what they're moving, what movement they're checking, and kind of understand that screw home mechanism. But um, that's it for the hip, that's it for the knee, and we're moving on to the foot and ankle.